More NFT collections have been added to the game. A second trophy run has been announced and our liquidity pool for keys has been created on Nifty Swap. My name is Axe Cap and I will be running you through the latest GFC updates from dev blog number 35. We start in game and web3 development. On the game system, we realized that some players were getting unfairly banned for seven days for AFKing or disconnecting due to the ban system. We have now updated this to reduce the ban length and also disabled disconnection as a reason for banning, which means the system should now be much more accurate in only punishing those who AFK. Limited bot weapons by rarity to avoid situations where players run into a number of high left level weapons being used by bots, improved matchmaking logic to let higher rank tiered accounts play together, avoiding players who use AFK or feed accounts to boost their rankings, implemented ECS or entity component system to improve game performance in preparation for 10 person real time battle royale mode and created a new map for the battle royale mode, which you can see some of the models here in the dev blog. Some new characters were added, Skeleton and Tigress from the Crypto Raiders collection, Fancy Bird, Fancy Bird Baby, Moonbirds and Tribe Lost Realm, Meta Billionaire, Karafuru, Goddess from Bio Peel Collection and Woman and Weapons. And you can see some of the models here in the article. And they've updated some of the stats from the Uninterested Unicorn Collection. Dashboard revamp. So testing of the new dashboard is ongoing and is close to completion. We are running test cases and manually testing a variety of scenarios that have had issues in the past to ensure this revamp patches those problems. Subtask one and two are completed and ready for deployment. Subtask three, the backend restructure and strengthening security is in testing phase. The task has been pushed back, so from the 10th of October to the 24th of October, because the dev team uh, were prioritizing implementation of the new partner collections in preparation for the cross IP tournament. Number two, the continued partner integration. The team have implemented 15 plus collections since the last update, and we are still going. Another five plus collections will be implemented in preparation for the cross IP tournament. Some recent changes and fixes to the energy system. The team have noticed that the energy system has slowed down on picking up NFT trends transfer events and sometimes even missed out on them entirely, which have caused some of our players to panic. In light of that, we spent time investigating the reason behind it. By experimenting with different node providers and Polygon RPC, we have come up with a list of retry logic that can catch errors when calls are failing or when responses are unusable. This has increased the stability of our energy system, asset transfers are detected more accurately, and we have had no reports on missing characters due to the energy system since the change. The second one here, loot box opening percentage adjustments. The status is live. We have recently made some adjustments to the probability of the drops from gold and silver keys. The quality of loot from gold keys are now improved and should better reflect their intended value. Number three, P2E key fragments liquidity pool. Status is live. We are happy to announce that the GFC team has decided to provide an official liquidity pool for keys on Nifty Swap. And the link here in the article will take you to the liquidity pool on Nifty Swap. This means that it is much easier for players to buy and sell keys. Buyers can purchase batches of keys just as easily on Nifty Swap without having to worry about being able to find listings. Onto the second section, business development and marketing. The team are making fantastic progress through various activations with partners. This doesn't only show in the activity across our social media channels, but also in the significant increase in daily active users, which is consistently in the one to one and a half thousand range and climbing steadily every day uh, more recently. As part of the Cross IP Championship, we launched another Gleam campaign and gave away one ETH worth of NFTs, one B64 board box and two board blasters. And the winners will have been announced on our Twitter by the time of publication. As far as the series of events are concerned, the trophy run has been concluded and winners will be announced on Friday, October the 21st. To announce the winners, we will host a live stream titled Trophy Run Key Opening Ceremony. Not only will the winners be announced, but we will also use a live stream to engage the audience and winners by allowing them to choose their rewards based on their rankings. We have also decided to launch a second trophy run before heading into the qualifying tournament starting right after the live stream. This will take place this Friday the 21st, so 11 a.m. EST or 11 p.m. GMT plus 8 time. 
The qualifying tournaments will therefore be held in November, followed by the final championship. For those of you who have not seen it yet, we published a teaser trailer for the championship and are very excited about releasing the full trailer soon. And you can find the teaser trailer here in this tweet in the article. Obviously, the Cross IP Championship wouldn't be fun without some major IPs and names in Web3, which is why we decided to onboard a handful of new projects into GFC and the tournament. So we have VFriends, the Mint Mink Trophy Run, Neo Tokyo, Lost Realms, the Doge Pound, Meta Billionaire, and the Hoot List, which is Moonbird's largest private community not associated with Proof. Ado was also on the Signal podcast where he talked more about Web3 Gaming, and you can listen to this on Spotify with the link here in the article. And finally, Animoca Brands, one of the leading buyers in our token sales, shared our latest progress update on Twitter. And again, there is a link to the tweet here in the article. And as always, we will finish with the last section, community. We all know that planning ahead is not always easy. So how to battle that? Flash tournaments. This weekend was all about community tournaments popping up during different times of the day on all different servers. Over 110 unique players formed 130 odd teams to compete in six Galaxy community tournaments. After battling for hours, seeing all out brawls and super close games. One game even lasted 35 minutes to end in a 1-0 win. Almost 10,000 G coin, multiple weapons and a Genesis fighter were handed out. Winners of the weekend guild wise were definitely GFI and 2CG. Is Comfy getting less comfortable at the top? Keen to see what this weekend action does to the guild leaderboard. Will there be any changes or will Comfy retain its first place and dominance? The playing field is definitely larger and we love to see it. One other thing that's been happening lately, be it slightly less fun for some, we have implemented the banning system. As with everything, things uh, won't be perfect from the get-go. We hear your feedback and we are tweaking the ban system. We appreciate your patience. We understand it is very inconvenient for some, but we also would like to point out that for most, these bans were handed out for a good reason. For any other questions and concerns, feel free to raise a ticket. We will be reaching the 1000 mark in the not far future for tickets or report shady characters in the newly created uh, player report channel on Discord. As with everything, we appreciate your feedback and you being part of the GFC family. So there you have it, another dev blog with some big updates from GFC. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one and we'll see you in the arena soon.